Welcome, and thank you so much for watching Prophetic Spotlight. Of course, I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken, and with me is the great general of our time, Apostle Alberta, has made a special night to share with us on some important news about our military. Can somebody give me an amen? Finally, we're speaking about people that help save us and keep us free. Thank you, Apostle, for joining me tonight. Well, I'm happy to be here, and I love you and so much, June Bishop, and thank you for letting me on the program. I'm very oh, well, of course, uh, you, you're an amazing young lady, and I hear you're going out of the States in a couple of months, and of course, you'll be traveling to us. You're in Washington, the state of Washington. I'm in Orange yeah. County, California. Here. She's coming to be with me all uh, two weeks right. next July. So when you, in July, when you, well, you'll see her every week. She's got a program every week. Well, she's one of our main uh, stays here at the Marketplace Network. And if you want to watch her videos, please do check Marketplace Network, YouTube, and scroll down to the Apostle Alberta. And you'll see all the videos that she's done. She'll do one every one. You get a fresh word every week if you're following her. And don't forget to subscribe. Very important. And don't forget to share her word with other people to get them healed, saved, and delivered. It's very important because, you know, a lot of people don't understand the gospel. They don't understand what it means. She really breaks the word down, and when she prays, I'm telling you, fire comes. So what do you got for us tonight? Well, I I got on Facebook, and oh, I was okay. amazed when I got on Facebook. I was amazed how many military are on okay. that Facebook and so I, I started talking to some of them. There was a couple oh. generals who proved Amen. who they said they were. And we talked, and I saw what they were doing. Did you tell them you're a general? Me up, Dr. Ken. Did you tell them you're a general? <laughs> yeah, too? it woke me. In the spirit? It woke me up. Because <laughs> I thought, where have I been? You know, uh, yeah, I'm an advocate for the police, and we do programs Absolutely on them. You are. Absolutely. But now what about the military? You know, I used to speak in Fort Lewis. One really? time I spoke to 300 young soldiers there. Wow. And we had a tremendous meeting. And I just treated them like they were my family. I said, you're now become my family and minister to them. And then one of their leaders came in after I got through speaking. And he said, Alberta, I have another one that you need to go and minister to. And I said, who? He said, it's one of the young men that's in the brig. You know, at that time they had a brig. Yeah. Amen. And Amen. so he led me in there. And that leader, I don't know what rank he was. He's pretty high up. And as he walked me down there, he said to me, now this is a young man who got in trouble. He's in the cell. He's in, he's in the dark. And he said, he needs prayer. And he, he, this leader said, Alberta, I feel so bad about that. He says, and every chance I get, I bring him out to go to court or whatever. Uh -huh. And he comes in and he sees the light. Oh, wow. And I thought, you know what? That matches up with Jesus Christ. When we, before we got saved, we were totally in the dark. Ooh, and then, that's good. The leader of heaven's armies, and there is an army in heaven, by the way, amen. isn't there, Dr. Ken? Oh, yeah, amen. He's got amen. his own army, and he's the head of it. And he brings us out of sin and darkness, and the Lord loves us like this military leader did, was just come and get us out of the dark and take us into the light. And I thought several times about this young man. And anyway, so I ended up ministering this young man, who I still think mm. about. I've never forgotten. How long ago, though? Oh, that uh, was about 10, 10 years oh, okay, ago, okay. something. But I still Maybe. remember it so vividly, how I've used it in sermons before, how how that young man was had to stay in the cell with no light. Have you, uh, and then they brought him out him? into the light. Have you heard of, of him? Have heard what happened afterwards? 
No, I didn't know what happened oh, to okay. him. But it was wonderful ministering to those 300 troops. It was just oh, wow. glorious. How exciting. I want to do that again. So anyway, I looked on Facebook, and there it was. All just military, military, military. And I thought, and some of you other people might be wondering, where, what have you been thinking of the military? Amen. And then I started friend befriending a lot of the generals, and, and I got to know them, and we talked about the military. Some are real, some are not. Some people copy them, you know, go on and say they're them, but a couple of the generals proved to me who they are. And I, I said, you know what? I said, I, I'm going to start talking about you more. I didn't realize, Dr. Ken, what these men and women go through until I got into all the videos and talking to a couple of these real generals. And, you know, these generals have given everything for the Lord. They've given a, their life for their country. I'll say it that way, for God and country. They left yeah. their kids. They left their new babies. Their wives mm -hmm. were left alone. They go out overseas. They fight. They see yeah. all kinds of blood, sweat, tears. They, they are worthy for us to all take a minute and let's honor them. And they do. You know, I saw Memorial Day. They really honor them. So I'm not saying we don't, but there's more. We need to pray for them. What do you think about that, Dr. Ken? Well, I think it's very important because we have to give honor where honor is due. A lot of them are going to dangerous areas and doing some things they may or may not understand or believe, and they have to believe in something. So when somebody like mm -hmm. you, so it's not a coincidence if you're a general in the spirit meeting these other generals, because you're helping. God is using you to guide a believer's army, if you will, here on earth, especially in America, to encourage them mm -hmm. to believe in Jesus Christ, to bring them home safely, to bring their families through all these things, and to bring people out of arm's way. So these people, uh, these military, uh, great, brave, honor, 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 honor them. They're so brave, I just can't say enough about them. But they need to know who Jesus Christ is so they have full protection. But more importantly, they'll know who the true Savior is there and what they're doing is right, and they can do it with all their heart. So you keep teaching this. Go ahead. Well, I have this Psalm 1830. It says, God's way is perfect. Yes. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to him. For protection. Wow. Now okay. I see on these this Facebook, a lot of them are using scriptures. A lot of them are talking about Jesus wow. Christ. Many Good of job. them have accepted Jesus into their heart and life. Wow. And it says, For who is God except the Lord? Who is but our God? He is a solid rock. So if you accept him, before you go into the military, yes. he's right there with you. And believe me, when they join, those young guys have a lot they have to go through. I Amen. wouldn't want to be them and have to do I'm all either. the things yeah. they do. And then what do they have to do? They got to get out and go to war if a war yeah. comes. Now, there's many of them that are overseas now protecting us. And yes. these generals, the real ones, they really need our prayers because they're still fighting for America. And one of them that I made friends with, he has a son, and he has wow. to not only still be in the military, but take care of his son too. Wow. So I think, uh, Dr. Ken, we're coming to a point to where, you know, if we have to go to war again, it's the generals and the majors and all of yes. those and get them ready to do it. And some people might think, oh, they're, they're tough, you know. Well, they, they have to be tough. And I kind of get a kick out of some of their pictures, you know, is, is they look really strict in one and then the other. They got this grin and this big smile, you That's know. For them. Yeah. And I know some of those pictures are used by people to pretend to be them, yeah. which to me is a major bad thing because the people that are pretending to be them They've never fought in a war, or maybe they did. 
you know, and, and they've never had to leave their families like these generals, these majors, all of these high men and women that are leaders, they have went to heck and back for our yeah, nation. Man. And they deserve every bit of respect and honor that that they have earned by yeah. their medals, by their uh, uniforms. And I know Chet, Chet, you know, came on and he kind of told him that they need to honor and respect the men that have fought for our country. But a, sure. a couple of them, or maybe more, have proved to me they are the real generals. And so we need to honor them. We need to respect them. Here's another scripture. And they overcame him, who? The enemy, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Matthew 18, 18, 19. So they didn't love their own lives to the death. Now they could have said, no, I'm not going you know, yeah. I'm not I'm not going out there and, and giving my life for this nation, but they chose to go out and give their life for their nations. Now the generals and all the other high ups have seen it all. You know, had, who of you would go out and 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 leave your families, leave your newborn baby, leave your beautiful wife, and go out and fight for a nation? They do. And I'm gonna honor them. You Amen. know, I they watch, sometimes they have watched my show from in, in Syria. You know, I tell oh. them about this, you know. And so I love them all. And those that are pretending to be the general when they're not, we love them too. We want them saved too. But we also want our leaders of our military honored. They deserve to be honored. Can you, what do you think, Dr. Kim? Oh, yeah, we should. I, I think every time I see service people, it wasn't a fad when I was growing up. Of course, you know, that was back in the Civil War. They used to, it's its sad, they used to spit on them, yell at them, kick them, try to hit them. And they weren't honored at all. But I know our culture is changing. I try to at least sow something into them. If I pray for them or buy their meal or at least say something encouraging, thank you for your service. And I think we all should do that. You show some kindness. Because they went, we didn't have to go. And we get to a point where, you know, they don't go, who will? Isaiah 6, 8 says, who should I send? They said, send me. So praise God, the people of faith, people of courage, people of real honor of who they respect this, not only God and country, but they respect their safety for their family and all of us. So we need to honor them, like you said, and really give them an opportunity to know who Christ is and I hope before the end of the program tonight, maybe you could uh, pray for everybody. But uh, keep keep going. I know you have some more things that you want to share with us. Well, you know, uh, another thing, too, they a few of them have actually left me a message praying for me. What? That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they have things, if you go on Facebook, you'll see. They have a mm -hmm. lot of scriptures on their Facebook. On I got so many military people on my Facebook because I love looking at them. And it reminds me of all of our other relatives that have been killed. I had relatives killed in the war. And, you know, these are these men are not selfish. They're not wow. selfish, or the women. They go out and they're there to strictly serve the country. And I got news for you. A lot of them are still leaving their families and going overseas. Wow. to serve our country and to watch over those troops that are there. And one time I oh. I was staying at a hotel not, not long ago when I went to Vancouver to uh -huh. uh, do a, 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 a program, not a program, a meeting. And I ran into a bunch of the soldiers, girls and boys, that were headed out uh -huh. to overseas. And I asked him, I says, is it okay if I pray for you? Oh, they said, please do. And I Hallelujah. always pray for them Psalm 9111. Ooh, that's a good one. Where it says, God will send the angels to give charge over you and keep you in all your ways. See, when they think they're going to war by themselves, but Jesus Christ is always there with them. He promised that in Psalm 91 that he would give his angels charge over them. 
So uh, the ones I ministered to, they accepted the Lord and they said, yeah, we're believers. There were about 20 of them. And I thought, you know what, Lord, they're leaving parents, they're leaving loved ones, and they wave bye-bye to their parents and grandparents. Oh, my goodness, that's hard. And so I want to be more in prayer for them. Okay. Uh, after I saw them on Facebook, I said, what in the world? You know, where have I been that I have not uh, noticed them? You know, we kind of forget about them. But now I'm, yeah, so. I'm going to be doing a lot on their behalf, too. Okay, good. What do you think of that? Well, I think uh, I think you're going to release a prayer in about five minutes that will okay. rock the nation. Uh, it will really encourage them, but more right. importantly, I believe if they're struggling okay. with uh, anxiety or uh, some type of fear, like their family won't make it without them, that God will take care mm -hmm. of them, or maybe they're struggling with health issues because, you know, we're in a different country sometimes. Uh, you have different challenges. So yeah. uh, we're going to believe for their health tonight. I want you to really go for it. Mm -hmm. I think um, you have something for them that will really comfort them, something that mm -hmm. uh, I think the peace of God is going to cover them in every aspect of their life, relationship, financially. But sometimes financially they struggle because they're not there in the States to take care of them. And they don't know if their money is, you know, going to the right place or whatever. Uh, yeah. And I've heard a lot of stories about that. I'm not saying that uh, the, our government's doing that. It's not. But I'm just saying sometimes, you know, there's challenges. And the last thing, of course, is uh, one of the most important is their health. When they go over there, my goodness, it's a challenge. Of what course, relationships. Yeah. Know. So, uh, you know, when you have time, when you're done, uh, in the next five minutes or so, maybe you could release a prayer. Okay, I've got another scripture for them, sure, sure. and it's Ephesians three eighteen. Okay. And may you have the power to understand, service people, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how deep is his love for you. You think uh -huh. you're alone in that foxhole, or you think you're alone in that ship? No, you have the God of heavy's ar heaven's armies with you. Yeah, there's an army in heaven. We'll do that another day. But you have him with you. Is all you need to do, call out on his name. And for you, military, or anyone else that doesn't know Jesus, it's simple. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever Believes in him, won't perish, but have everlasting life. The minute wow. you say, Jesus, forgive me my sins, come into my heart, he's right there. And he'll be with your families, too. When you leave your families, that's that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And Jesus had to leave his mother when he was on the cross. When he'd been crucified, she stood, stood at the bottom of the cross and wow. he told John, his disciple, he said, you take care of my mother. And yes. he looked at Mary and he said, John's going to be your son. Well, trust God like Jesus did with his mother. The Lord, wow. when he, of course, he rose from the dead three days later. But during that time, he knew his mother was going to suffer and, and wow. grieve. Well, the same yes. goes on with your mother or your wife or your, or your dad. Are you grandparents? So right now, yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, teacher. Lord, we pray for our military. We pray for those generals, those majors, all of the, the leaders who work so hard. Even now they do. There's no war to speak of like they had in the past. But Lord, they're overseas still watching over these young soldiers and taking care of them. Father, I ask for healing in their in their heart. A lot of them been hurt, been wounded. They've seen blood, sweat, tears. They've seen other soldiers die right in front of their eyes. So, Lord, we would just ask you to touch them tonight. Touch their families. God, when they go leave, Lord Jesus, I pray the angels of the Lord will watch over not only them, but on their family at home. That's scriptural. We don't worship angels, 
But you can ask them when you leave on duty or whatever, you can ask the Lord to send those angels to your family and to go with you also. And so, Father, we pray for them in Jesus' name. Heal every hurt, every wound that's in them. Heal their minds of what all they've seen. And, Lord, we are honor them, just like we honor you, Lord Jesus, for giving your life. We honor them, and so do you, Jesus. So take care of our veterans and our troops, and to those brave generals and major generals and all those high ups too that have given so much for our country in jesus name amen i would just want to take a minute before you give an altar call on some that might not know the lord if you don't mm -hmm. mind doing that but i want to say uh, apostle i call her general is mm -hmm. open if any of you pastors are watching this or maybe some of the generals that need a you know somebody in inspirational come in and give a quick pep talk to our troops when they're down and maybe they fought for a long time or maybe they're tired or maybe they just kind of gave up hope or whatever it is, I want to ask you to add uh, all her information is at the bottom of the screen mm -hmm. right here. So make sure you get a hold of her and make a day for her to come out and minister and speak to the troops or you pastors out there that have a lot of uh, military people. It'd be great to have her in or any type of uh, meeting that you have. I've seen a lot of signs, and I've seen a lot of healing, I've seen a lot of deliverance, and we need that now. We don't talk about that enough. In my day, back in 1850, deliverance wasn't really talked about, but nowadays there's a pill for everything. My goodness. We took all those pills, you know, it would be, take you all day to take all those pills. They're talking about we need it for this, that, and the other. I'm not talking about vitamins. I'm talking about medication. So I don't know, you know, what's what, what that's about, but let the general, her, her, <laughs> make sure that you get a hold of her by email and let her pray for you. Mm -hmm. And on coming shows, make sure you subscribe. It's free, and you'll always have a fresh word from her every week on maybe what you're struggling with. Or email her. You know, Apostle, I'm, I'm struggling with a uh, relation. Okay, let her talk to you about that. Or I'm struggling with health. Can you pray for me? Absolutely, she will. Or financial. I've seen a lot of miracles. She prayed for me over the phone a couple of weeks ago, and finances broke. So she's no joke. So I want to give a special invitation for all you ministers out there. If you need to re-value your church, you're not getting a lot of people in, bring her in. She's a TV personality. She'll bring a lot of people in, and I promise you, people will get healed, saved, and delivered. Apostle, before we close, Quickly, let's give an invitation out to all those people that don't, don't know Jesus. All right. Uh, not just the military, but anybody watching. Amen. You, you're never too old or, or never too young to accept Jesus in your heart and life. And the minute you invite him in, he doesn't waste any time. He comes in. And he lives with you forever. He never leaves you. He never Absolutely. forsakes you. And there's a scripture where he said, ask what you will, and he will do it. Read Matthew 18, 19, and 20. And just know that when you ask him for something, he will do it. And he said, we're two or more gathered in his name. He's in the midst. I've seen so many huge miracles that the Lord has done. So right now, just it's simple. Well, Alberta don't have to do it. No. Just confess with your mouth. The Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. So just say, Lord Jesus, I don't know too much about you, but I know you died on the cross and rose again. Lord, help my unbelief. But Amen. Jesus, forgive me for every sin I've ever committed. Come into my heart and come into my life and be Lord of my life. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. And just thank him. Now he's there. He don't waste any time coming into your heart and life. And then you can ask him to send angels to my family to protect them. Send angels to protect me. And I've seen that over and over again with my family and other family members, especially lately. The Lord has been coming right to the rescue. But we always ask the Lord to send angels to them ahead of time to protect them. 
So there's a lot of benefits, Psalm 103, from serving God. Read about it. I don't have time to tell you. But you got a lot of benefits when you accept Jesus into your heart and life. The book of John says he's the creator of heaven and earth. Everything that was, everything that's ever going to be, look at the web telescope, all that he created. So just let him be Lord of your life. And you say, oh, well, you know, then tell him, say, I'm having a hard time believing. Please understand. And you know what? He will cause you to believe. He'll come in and he'll show you. So just know that he's real. I know for a fact. I can't go into that either. But I know that our Lord and Savior is real. Okay? If you've accepted him, let us know. But know that he's with you. Amen? Amen. Good work. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'd like to close the story about a little technical moving this around a little. I'd like to close with this. Uh, the general does a lot of meetings all over the country. She's going out of the country at our request to minister to a huge group of people. Uh, and it's going to take a lot to get her out. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's coming to me for a couple of weeks. It's not free for her to fly. or uh, She can't walk out here. She probably would if she wanted to. But... Uh, we need to get her out here and minister to the people here in town. You know, sometimes uh, if you haven't lived in California, there's the Hollywood spirit. If you, those of you who know what I'm talking about. But she's very good at, at praying and getting people to deliverance and getting them healed and, and really a joy in their heart that there's peace with the Lord. No matter, you don't have to have a billion dollars. You don't have to have, you know, the perfect mate. You don't have to have perfect children. But when you have the joy of the Lord, you have it all. So yeah. would you help me? Would you sow a seed to her tonight? The Zell number is right, da right down at the bottom of the screen. Can you see my finger was pointing but underneath her? Sow the seed, whether it be $10, the widow's mind, 25 means blessing, 50 means jubilee. I'm telling you, if you want this kind of anointing, look how peaceful she is. Even though she's 25, she's been doing this a long, long, long time. And that's what she's talking about. That's why she's the general. We only have a few left in our generation now. So everything she says is yes and amen. The Lord really speaks to her. So please, if you want to get out of financial debt, start sowing a seed monthly to her. You're not doing anything with Jesus. It's in Genesis 12, 2. It says, I'll make your name great. We have to be known for something. She's known for praying for people to get their deliverance to move in forward with the calling of Christ that's on their life. So if you don't have that kind of ministry, or any ministry at all, why don't you sow into somebody, I'll get my finger straight, somebody like the her that does this on a regular basis and is front of hundreds and thousands of people every single week. You know, if you sow in, you get the same reward if she's getting the same crown in heaven that she gets. You'll get the same because you partner with them. And so, their well, gifts are tax deductible too. Correct. So you get a tax write off as well. So please, so generally, don't forget to watch our program next week. I have PayPal now too. Oh, she's got PayPal. <laughs> ask her what that means. Don't ask her. <laughs> Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken, the great Apostle General himself, Alberta. We'll see you next week. I love you. I love you, love you, love you.